Okay, real quick, I'm going to get all this stuff in yesterday's video. There it is there. Finley from Scotland asked good question. So what happens next? Okay, uh, well, I'd say pause it for a second so you can read this here. And I'm going to show you uh, why I think the two big planets, the one that crossed the uh, GOES-16 and Himawari 8 weather satellites, on October 16th at 22,236 mile geostationary orbit. So they're within that orbit headed toward Earth in my opinion. And then also I'm going to cover this uh, why I think the big planet that passed the ACE satellite also on the 16th of 18, 10, 16, 18 <clears throat> would also be headed toward Earth. So first we'll start with uh, Go 16. Uh, click full screen or you're not going to be able to see this. <clears throat> so here's Go 16 East. That's the 22,236 mile geostationary orbit, which is represented by these dotted lines. And then we get the Go's 13 and 14 and 15 up here. And these are the ones that are giving us all this uh, ISWA integrated space weather analysis simulations. Okay, so here's Go 16. Same time, same station, but it's barely showing now. So on the 16th, the pixelations were way up to here, October 16th, and this thing was shooting light beams, reflecting light beams from the sun simulator and from the sun, of course. See the more yellow orangish light beams there? That would be from the regular sun and then. This one's got a more focused white light beam that's coming from the sun simulator reflection. As you can see, it's almost passed out of our uh, purview from these from these weather satellites. And I showed you the same thing on Himawari last night and the last several times. So you can see it crossing through. And then this is just the sun coming up over here. So it's about the same time around... 4.15 UTC, which is around 11.15 p.m. Eastern Standard or Eastern Daylight Time. Okay, so let's pull up Davis Station. This is the uh, webcam down there. And I'm going to show you what their sunrise and sunset times. This is in Antarctica. So normally the sun's rising somewhere around 4.30 a.m and setting around 10 30. you can so it should be dark between 10 30 or thereabouts and 4 30 or thereabouts a.m now uh, you can see this here there's the time stamp so there's eight nine ten ten thirty it's still light you see the sun went down over here Okay, and here comes the sun back around, around 4.30. We'll let it play all the way around so you can see it one more time. This is November 9th. There comes the sun. We're not catching any objects per se in here that I noticed anyway, but I didn't really examine it that closely. It's clouding up, but it's going to lighten up again. Okay, here we are coming around to sunset again. But as you can see, it stays lit all night long. That's been going on for at least a week or two when I first checked it. A couple weeks anyway. So that's planet number one. I'd say it's incoming. Otherwise, it would be showing up more so on these weather satellites and not going away from them. And... Earth wouldn't be getting lit up like it is if it weren't coming toward the planet. That's my supposition there. Now, I don't think it's a huge planet, but it's it's got to be pretty big. And then, uh, so the GOES 16s up here and the Himawari down here, or vice versa. They're in geostationary orbit at 22,236 miles. Okay. And this is the latest space weather. <clears throat> I got it speeded up to 8 frames per second, the last 300 frames. Looked at the solar wind speeds, they're pretty normal. 
well, not normal, but normal for what we've been seeing. <clears throat> There's fluctuating somewhat between 500 and some occasional 900 up here. And this is all coming from these geostationary, geosynchronous satellites, 13, 14 goes, and 15, measuring all this uh, space weather inside the magnetopause. Basically, it's measuring it from the L up to the L8 Lagrange point. And these are, or no, L8, I'm sorry, Earth radii. These are Earth radii. They're 4,000 miles roughly, 3,959 miles. And I'll show you the uh, L shell <clears throat> Fock radiation belt here in a second. So it's measuring out about eight, eight shells, which each shell corresponds to an Earth radii. So figure these satellite per view are measuring basically space weather from nine earth radii down here to nine earth radii up here and probably get catching some more so that's why these solar wind speeds are fluctuating so much the nemesis is behind the earth you can see the pressure pressing all these electron volts in toward the planet uh, at 100,000 electron volts that's when uh, ionized radiation begins to occur where electrons are stripped from the atoms and that's at 100,000 electron volts when you get up to 4 million electron volts you get some serious gamma radiation going on but that all changed yesterday when I showed you in that video but let's get back to planet number two so here's the discover last seven days and uh, if you remember from, from my earlier videos uh, we had a pretty strong connection to the back side something behind the earth above 180 degrees on the phi angle but around well as you can see back here it started to lend tending more toward an earth sun connection and I think that's related to this big planet that passed ACE on the 16th at the L1 Lagrange point. Now here's the solar, solar ham space tutorial. Here's with a phi angle. So you can pause this and read it. Or you can go in and description box and pull it up. I don't have time to show it to you on this. If I want to get this all in. And then you can click here. And that's the L1 Lagrange point. So on October 16th. That big planet. Which was giving us a 9 hour gap on ACE. Started out 3-4 hours. Maybe 8-9 months ago. And then it grew to 9 hour gap. And then all of a sudden on October 16th. Blam. Nothing. No gap. Then we got gaps from the data relay. Between ACE and uh, Earth. And then after a week or two, that went away. So it's somewhere in between here and the Earth. And that's what I think caused this. Uh, that's what I think caused this more lending toward an Earth to, Earth to Sun connection or Sun to Earth connection. Because that big planet was helping out. Pulling, the, you know, the magnetic field of the big planet was helping to make that connection with the Sun to the Earth. But... I think it got to the point, and this is on November 9th, where around midday, we got back to a strong backside connection. Anything above 180 degrees, you'll see on that triangle tutorial, indicates a backside connection with a solar body to the Earth. So, um, and then here, if you notice here, and I think that maybe is what caused this, uh, the fact that this big planet is closer to the Earth now relative to the Sun reestablished that backside connection with uh, Nemesis. And also, if you notice here, all of a sudden on the 9th, I showed you this in yesterday's video. And we got some missing time, but on October 9th, remember, or November 9th, I showed you that that's when the, we had the strong backside connection again with Nemesis on the phi angle. And we got missing time here from 9, from 9, 19, 9, 20 to 
10 13 so that's like a 17 hour missing time but this is what i wanted to show you that that's when this event stopped which began around up november 2nd november 3rd that's when we got the big huge radiation gamma radiation bleed where all these things got pretty much whited out so I think when once we reestablish that connection with Nemesis and this big planet closer to the Earth relative to our Sun, or at least magnetically speaking, this is like the calm before the storm. We're getting some more magnetic uh, strength from this big planet that's coming in. You can see its field lines are uh, stacking up in front of our planet. These IMF blue lines. That's got to be coming from that big planet, and then you see these big gaps more and more where um, it's just, I think it's just getting closer, and we're not getting as much fluctuation in this uh, solar wind that's coming in the planet because this big planet's closer. So the closer it gets, that would only stand to reason a less fluctuation as it spins out the uh, magnetic field lines. But you can see they're still stacking up. And we're getting more magnetic strength from this big planet. That's why these polar cap field lines are getting darker. So I think basically what happened is um, this is sort of like a calm before the storm, in my humble opinion. We reached a uh, equilibrium point again. And it happened a while back, too, a couple weeks ago on one of my videos. I pointed it out. We reached some type of an equilibrium. So this is the only one that's showing uh, this is updated. This is the only one that's updated. So ever since 11, 10, 1300 hours, everything got back to normal. Because so I think this big planet came in close enough that it stabilized the... Uh, interplanetary magnetic field environment around the earth relative to nemesis our sun was never much of a factor <coughs> so you can see here none of these updated these are all the other Falk l shells and there's there's the earth radii one two three four five that's what i was pointing out to you on the simulation but as you can see there that's our last uh on 11.8 so that's why I only have this one pulled up see 11.8 1700 11.8 2100 11.8 1700 so that's what's happening there so that was a great question Finley Scotland it's a good time to do a little recap because I think we're in an equilibrium period um, there's my two hypotheses. You have to hit reply to get to the second one because YouTube likes to mess with my comment section. Hit new is first. That way you'll see all the comments. They hide a lot of comments on me. So here's the deal. Once the sun simulator, whoops. Okay, this is a good point here. Read this one and then click on this. Gravity is much lesser force, much as 10 to the minus 40th power less. And I have to hide some of these comments in the under, under the replies just so they show up somewhere. Unless you guys are diligent about clicking that newest comments first. But this is what I think it's going to look like. So you click that predictive programming link, it brings you to this Curiosity Stream commercial with uh, Chris Hadfield and Michelle Kuku, Koka, Kaku. Anyway, they're yucking it up, driving around, and showing these big planets. I think that's what's going to look like. Predictive programming. So the sun simulator is in a heliosynchronous orbit about. Uh, 700 to 800 kilometers above the planet so once these objects get below that eh, it's pretty much over that's when we're going to see that predictive programming commercial type stuff i believe so avail yourself of the comment section and be sure to open up this description box and avail yourself of all these great links i got in here
running out of time. God bless. Peace. And I'm out.